Brooke's been paying Scott off? These symbols match Scott's. This must be some sort of code. So does this one. Hmm. These are all of the windmill. That must be where Scott's been meeting Brooke. Nancy, have you seen Scott? Not since we got back. There's a huge front coming in and he's nowhere to be seen. This is not like Scott. If you see him around, will you let me know? Chase and Frosty and I are supposed to be leaving for the Grange soon, and I really need to know that someone is keeping an eye on these fronts. What are you doing here? You mean me, as opposed to Brooke? <laughs> Brooke? What are you talking about? When I was fixing the phone jack, I accidentally overheard the phone conversation you two had. I could hear it through the headset on your desk. And just what do you think you overheard? Enough to know you two are working together. You've been sabotaging your own team, haven't you? You've been doing everything you can to make sure Brooke's team wins and yours loses. That's ridiculous. That's why you're meeting her way out here, so the people who've been looking up to you all this time couldn't see her paying you off. I have never gotten the credit I deserve for the work I've done, ever! I know more about tornadoes than any person alive, and I get neither the respect nor the compensation people half as brilliant as me get without lifting a finger! Why? Because I work for a podunk college run by podunk incompetence bent on badmouthing and spiting me at every turn just because I don't play well with others at their idiotic staff meetings. Why don't you just quit? 
Because thanks to them, I'm considered impossible to work with. No other school will hire me. I'm stuck here and they know it. So yes, I've been sabotaging my own team. And yes, Brooke is paying me a small fortune to do so. Because I've had it. I'm through. A tornado's forming. I can feel it. It'll be on the ground in minutes. And it's going to be huge. And here you are, a novice out in the field and all alone. Nancy, please pick up. Over. I'm here. I think Scott knocked me out. He did what? When I confronted him about selling the team out to Brooke, he went berserk. I can't believe he would do that. And with Brooke Tavanaugh, of all people. Well, we'll deal with that later. Right now, I need you down here at the Grange ASAP. We need to evacuate the theater, and you've got my Grange keys with you in Frosty's car. I'm on my way. Over and out. Chaos here. I was able to cobble together a pretty basic tracking system back at the homestead, and instantly I knew we were in trouble. The storm was showing a high potential of moving into town, but without the proper readings, we couldn't issue an alert. I knew we'd have to evacuate the Grange in person. But when we got here, we saw that it's locked. The shelter is locked on a performance night. I need you to take care of this while the rest of us work on a backup plan, okay? I'm trusting you here. I know you can do this. There are a lot of people depending on you right now. What is this now? Who would double lock a storm shelter? Nancy, quick, which key opens the shelter? Yes, you did it! Nice job, Nancy. Well, I think the worst has passed. Nancy, where are you going? Get in the shelter! I can't just let Scott get away. Okay, Nancy, first thing, switch on your GPS. That little dot you see, follow that and it will lead you right to Scott. We put a tracker on his truck. It's a safety thing. But Nancy, be careful out there. Keep this radio on and I'll do my best to keep you safe. Nancy, I'm really sorry about everything that happened back there. Scott, he... he wasn't always like this. I knew... I mean, I was worried about him earlier. His heart clearly wasn't in it anymore. He was putting us in danger. I just wanted to do what's best. That's not what it sounded like when I overheard you talking to Frosty. You two wanted to get rid of Scott. And from where I was standing, you sure didn't sound very concerned about safety. Nancy, I know it probably sounded bad, but there's a lot you don't know. Pete, the intern you took over for? His injury wasn't just an accident. He got hurt because Scott sent him out where he never should have been. After that, I knew I had to take over. That's still no... Looking back, I do things differently. But I did what I did for the right reason. I wanted to push Scott until the world saw how reckless he was being. It was a mistake. I screwed up and I accept responsibility. No matter what happens out there, promise me that you'll be careful. I promise.
made it. Dear Ned, once the theater was successfully evacuated, Debbie and Chase were able to follow the GPS tracking signal to the spring house, where Scott and I had safely weathered the storm. Although he was pretty seriously shaken up in the crash, Scott came to in time to see Frosty arrive with the police. He received community service for destruction of public property and interfering with public safety records. He didn't fare so well with a the college. They fired him quicker than lightning hitting a beast on Greyhound, as they say around here. So it looks like he'll actually be serving the community now, instead of just pretending to. Even if it's just by picking up garbage by the side of the road. Word spread quickly about Scott's misdeeds, and soon Brooke Tavanaugh, the rival chase team leader, found herself out of a job as well. With the storm season almost over, it looked like both teams were out of the competition. Debbie, always the organizer, decided to combine the remaining members on both teams for the remainder of the season. Without Scott's ever-present storm cloud hanging over the team and his constant sabotaging, the team really began to hit its stride with Debbie in charge. Two days after I told Krollmeister I had found the source of the sabotage and the change in team leaders, Debbie's chase team was greeted by a surprise delivery, the next generation of Krollmeister's storm tracking and detection equipment. With Scott out of the picture, Frosty renegotiated his contract. Now that he's able to pursue his own projects on the side, he's just about doubled his output. He's launched his own business, and when he's not getting pelted by softball-sized hail, you'll find him in his studio. Chase has given up on his dreams of finding oil. Even if he hadn't, he wouldn't have the time to look. Debbie's keeping him too busy. Free from having to spend his days fixing Scott's mistakes, Chase has finally had the opportunity to show off his keen sense for weather. Now that Debbie has accepted Scott's old position as head of the Canute Storm Team, he's become her right-hand man. Last I heard, he was going to assist Debbie in her classes in the fall. And when I got home, I found a surprise delivery myself as well. The first shipment of my lifetime supply of Coco Kringle Bars. Krollmeister also sent me a note, telling me to keep my bags packed. He has a special surprise trip planned for me as a way to say thanks. As long as it's some place where the clouds stay in the sky like they belong, I'll be happy to go. While the winners of the Green Skies event won't be determined until fall, things are looking pretty good for Debbie's team. With the new equipment, they've logged the most storm data. And although Debbie won't be showing anyone until she's 100% sure, the team may have made a verified touchdown prediction. Yesterday, a postcard from Pa arrived. After the town repaired the storm damage to the Grange, they restaged the town play. They even added a new part about the storm, including a scene where a certain someone unlocks the storm shelter. As long as it wasn't played by Pa in a wig, I'm happy. Pa says that he remembered most of his lines this time, at least the important ones. As for me, well, I've had just about enough stormy weather for one season. Love, Nancy. After risking my life chasing down deadly twisters, I think it's time for a change of pace. I've decided to join Bess and George on their trip to Kyoto, Japan. I've always wanted to visit Japan, from the exotic food and wild fashion in the cities to the nature and tradition in the smaller towns. I know there's going to be a ton to see and do. As a thank you for all of my hard detective work, P.G. Krollmeister has reserved a room for me at one of the area's best ryokans, or traditional inns. It'll be nice to finally take a break from solving mysteries and to spend a few weeks without danger and dark secrets hiding around every corner. I've already heard that the Ryokan I'm staying in has quite a reputation. I'm not sure exactly for what, though. Well, I'll find that out soon enough. Join me in my next adventure, Shadow at the water's edge.